in the mirror Man, you're so dirty Yeah, you look so dirty You were never worthy Lately, it's you Welcome to the, well, good morning Welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show If you're easily triggered, leave now Because this is not the show for you now, what I'm going to talk to you about today, ladies and gentlemen, is about the state that our modern women are in, the um, black women in particular. I want to tell y'all, gentlemen, that um, in women too, that the wall is here now for many of you. And I want to break down the wall right quick. The wall in the red pill community, we always seem to say that the, the wall starts around your late or mid thirties. I'm going to have to disagree with that now. I think it's the early thirties or it may be the late twenties now. And the reason why I say that is because of the changes in our economy, the inflation, the rising prices of gas, diapers, milk, juice, all that type of stuff is putting pressures, different types of stressors on the shoulders of women. Women are not built like men. Men are built for durability. Women are built for comfort. They have their purpose. We have our purpose. Men are like Dodge trucks. Women are like bumper cars and go-karts. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. That's my humble opinion. What I said it is, we are the hunter and we are the gatherers. We are the providers. We are the protectors. We are built for inflation. We don't like it. It sucks and stuff like that, but we are built for it. When women are trying to act masculine and feminine at the same time, but mostly masculine, it does something to them mentally. They break down. Now, I'm going to show you some clips of, of women who are young. Some may be getting to 30-something. But you're going to see young women talking about that they are tired of being independent independent women. Just woke up, y'all. I got to get my coffee in. So we're going ahead and play this right quick. I want you to see. And I'm going to give you some facts, data, and statistics as well to back up what I'm saying. One second as I uh, put on the screen for you. Being the strong, independent black woman gets tiring. I personally am done with it. I am done trying to do everything myself, trying to prove society that I can get my bag and I can do all bad by myself. See, that's the problem with a lot of black women today, modern women in particular. You always feel the need to impress those who don't really give a damn about you. You want to impress your girlfriends, your friends, your peers, your colleagues, more than you want to impress the man of your dreams your husband, your fiance, your boyfriend. See, the thing is now, it's a competition. It's gone way out the arena of trying to please men. They're trying to please themselves, prove something to themselves, but most importantly, they want to prove something to their girlfriends. They want to prove that they can make it, that they can do it without a man. It's a competition between women. Women be at each other's throats over hairstyles, over clothing, over cars. It, they done gotten to the point where they have just depreciated in morality, okay? So now it's catching up to them. This independent thing was sold to them through feminism, the second wave feminism. That second wave of feminism have taught them to, com to be completely independent and that they don't need nobody, not just a man, to an extent where they may feel that they don't need God because when they go to church, they'll go to church and they only do what the church says to do if it suits their lifestyle. Anything that's in that church that tells them to stop doing this, stop being a hard-headed woman, a mule, stubborn, they'll walk out that church and go someplace else. That's just my humble opinion. Let's keep going. I can do all bad by myself. I don't want to be Superman. I don't want to wear tights. I want to wear a skirt and heels and just dance. Like, I want to be in my softness. I want to be in my femininity. And I want to be able to ask a man for help and not feel guilty. I think as black women and women of color, we have to like step into our our femininity. And I had to realize that asking a man for help and a man helping you do things that you are far capable of doing does not take away from your feminine power. It does not take away from your essence. It allows you to bloom. It allows you to blossom in your own energy because you're not running around trying to do everything. So that is a woman who's actually begging for a man indirectly okay these women are getting tired of it. a lot of these women gentlemen believe it or not i ain't gonna say a lot i'm gonna take that back but a few of these women are waking up and they understand even i'm talking about women who are accomplished women who have things women who say i have a car a crib i can do it all by myself they looking over 
to the other side of that bed at night and realize they ain't got nobody there. All those achievements and PhDs and all that shit doesn't mean nothing in the long run, okay? Now they waking up, some of them. I got another one to show you right quick. Hold on right quick, please. Listen to this young lady. Now, you see the woman I just played? She wasn't no old lady. She looked like she might be 30-ish to me. You know what I mean? I could be wrong. But the more I play, the more younger they're going to appear. Okay, I just want to go on record and say, I feel like millennial women got set up. Growing up, we were fed all of this propaganda about being independent. We got Neo's Miss Independent. We got Destiny's Child, all my ladies who independent. Throw your hands up at me, Webby, I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. Do you know what that means? We were fed all of this propaganda about being independent. And you know what? Baby, I'm tired, okay? Where is Miss, I need someone to help me carry my boxes? Where is Miss, it snowed this weekend and I don't want a shovel? Now, yes, I am Miss Independent. <clears throat> But I would like to be retired. Who would like to retire me to be Miss Have a Man Helper? Now think about that. Now that's another woman who is saying that she's been sold a lie about feminism. See, like I've already said before, any woman who says that she is a boss chick, boss diva, or I am so independent, I don't need a man, I'm better off single. Sometimes these women don't realize that they are feminists. They really don't know that. Some of the, especially the black women, they're just saying that because Beyonce said that other people in their group, their peers, their colleagues say all that stuff and they go with it because it sounds good. But they don't understand the, where, the origin story about it. In the 1920s, you had first wave feminism. It was about suffrage. Suffrage is simply about having the rights to vote for women. Women was complaining about the suffrage. And they also was complaining about the maternal rights, meaning that if they had a woman, if a woman has children, if she was married or not, they believe that women should have equal rights to quality health care for the children. I agree with that. The first wave, from my understanding, was not really bad. They needed to um, have rights. And then the white women, they were voting. That was this whole thing about. Then later on, um, the Voting Acts of 1965 came along where people of color that was women can um, vote as well. Okay. Now, second wave feminism was the time when they focused in the 1960s over um, my body, my choice, reproductive rights, um, sexual no that's the next one um financial independence and stuff that was that's when it first kicked out third wave feminism when that came i think it was in the 90s that's when they started focusing on being horse when they start sexuality explore my sexuality let me be who i am look at me and all this stuff my body parts you have no right to say that that's when that came but they all jumped on board for this a lot of these women who watched beyonce watch nikki um you know minaj you know little kim and stuff like that they wanted to emulate these women, but did not understand that all these women was products of feminism. There, some of them don't. I'm being honest with you. Only older women tend to understand that. But the younger generation, no, nah, they just think that's how life is supposed to be when it's not. Now, let me put some um, facts on the screen for you right quick. Showing you why it's so hard for these women. Now, check this out. Oh, let me make sure I get it on the screen for you completely where you can read it. Make it a little bit larger for you. Okay, here we go. Now... According to the National Council on Aging, on aging, getting older, the key takeaways are just over half of American women ages 25 and older say they do not consider themselves financially secure. And 77% of low-income women say the same. Nearly half of women report not having an employer-sponsored retirement plan. Now, what is an employer-sponsored retirement plan? That's your... Um, 401k that is your Roth 401k or things that your job provides so where you can put some money away for your retirement and sometimes you can enjoy tax breaks tax benefits majority of women don't work jobs like that you don't get this type of benefit from my understanding of working at Burger King McDonald's or Ross or no some certain retail stores don't offer that you know what I'm saying certain careers do but certain jobs don't you may find some of these um, things in factories and then you may not. Now, when it says just over half of American women age 25, that's young. 25 and older. That still is young. They said that they are not financially secure. And then when it says 77% of low income women say the same, that's your people, low income, that's the people that are borderline on housing. They have to go through government assistance or they're just 
pretty much the, below the line of poverty or close to it, they are not able to sustain. They cannot keep up with inflation. They cannot keep up with the economy. This is what I'm telling you. That wall is being pushed closer to women, closer at a younger age than 30-something because it's harder for them now. Now, according to this other statistic, it says, according to the, 22, the 2022 shared data, women, which is 79% were less likely than men, which were 84% to report being able to pay all their bills on time and in full. One of the reasons for this is that women are more likely to have volatile incomes. Now, what is a, and that was in August 17, 2023. What is a volatile income? Women who say shit like, I'm an entrepreneur. I got my lash business going. And even, even on cosmetology, which is a good job for some women, but that isn't always steady. You know what I mean? There's a lot of jobs women are working where they can experience layoffs or get fired. And there's some women who have absolute no, absolutely no skill sets. They do jobs that everybody else can do. So therefore, they don't get good money. Because if you get fired, I can, for example, McDonald's. There's nothing special about flipping burgers. And I'm not taking away from anyone who does that job, but there's nothing special about that. You could teach somebody. I used to do that when I was a kid. You can learn that in a day. How to um go get the fries and stuff, flip the burgers. It don't take that long. You know what I mean? So it's not a real skill set. It's just something that you're doing. So a lot of women are not separating themselves to where they can be um of some kind of unique use in the economy. So these women's jobs are volatile, up and down. They can become bad. You know what I mean? And 79% of women say they can't pay their bills on time or in full. We're talking about now in 2024 as well in 2023. Now, according to this statistic, it says that women represent two-thirds of those considered financially fragile, a subset of Americans living paycheck to paycheck who lack any financial slack or support. Okay, now financial slack. No one is giving these women slack. The creditors are not giving you slack. You are paying penalties on late payments. No one is giving you slack. Your credit report is going down. No one is really working with you the way you want them to work with you. So you are not getting any type of financial slack. The burdens of financial pains and struggles is all over these women's faces. They are in survival mode now than they ever was before. And when it said that they have no financial slack or financial support, that's talking about their peers, their colleagues, and family. They may, only thing that family and friends and peers can do most times is encourage them and tell them it's going to be okay because they don't have enough money themselves to be given to them, to give away to anybody else, but they can't support them. They have their own struggles that they are dealing with. So today's woman, man, the wall is here. Like um, Kevin Salmon used to say, winter is com coming. Winter is here. Women is, um, excuse me. When Kevin Samuels used, to, Samuels used to say, winter is coming. Winter is here. It's not coming. It's here. You hear what I'm saying? Look, like, now look at this woman. Does she look like she's old? And she's not even a little over 31 yet. And she's already hitting the wall. She's already understanding that she was sold some bullshit. She don't have any children yet. I'm sorry about that. I didn't realize it went on the screen. Please, no, sorry. I didn't know that. Excuse me. Let me go ahead and put this other woman on the screen like that. I did not know. I'm talking. Y'all don't even know what I was talking about. I'm, I apologize. Uh, independent women, stop it. Y'all making it hard for me. I don't want to be independent. So what does independent woman mean to you? I got it. I could do it by myself. I don't need nobody. I got my own money, my own car, my own house, my own. Shut up. You ain't supposed to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. You supposed to have a partner. You ain't supposed mm -hmm. to be in this world alone. You know how hard it is carrying all the groceries in by yourself? That is stressful. You need a man for that, okay? Yeah, what about what about the pushback though from the women that are saying, Well, I tried that and there's no quality men that's stepping up to the plate. What about those women who have gone through that experience and, and say, you know what, man, I'm just gonna try to do it myself just because I haven't been successful. I say treat it like you do a job. When you have a job that don't work out, you don't be like, well, I'm I'm done. I ain't gonna never work again. You're gonna keep pushing, you're gonna keep trying, you're gonna keep making it work. You gotta keep going. Also, a job is a livelihood, though. A man may not be a livelihood for a lot of women. Look, I was one of those women like, you know what, screw it, I'ma just 
do my own thing and, you know, do it by myself. But deep down, I was like, I don't want to do this. My point exactly is catching up to him. Now, I can't remember because I just woke up, man. I'm drinking my coffee. But I don't know if I played this clip earlier, but I'm going to play it again in case I didn't. And maybe you get a different take on it from me. But I wanted to show y'all how women are, their bodies, their mental, their emotion, mostly. They can't handle all this damn stress and pressure, all that Miss Independent, I'm a boss chick. It's a short-term joy with a long-term pain. Let me play it. Just in case I'm wrong, I'm going to play this last clip. Bear with me. I fell for the boss bitch, the, like, I, I could do everything by myself, the hyper-independent bullshit. And I'm 31 now, and I still don't. That's what I was saying a while ago. She's 31. She don't look like she old. The wall is closer to her. So the wall has moved up to damn near late 20s for some of these women. Early 30s, late 20s. All because of the economy. All because everything that's going on. And it's only going to get worse for women. So women need to focus on getting married and finding a husband now in their 20s. As soon as they come out of high school. You really do. And do what most, especially black women, do what most ethnic groups do. Still find a way to get married and get a husband and still pursue a career. Stop having it where you only pursue a career first because you're fearful that if you get a man, it won't work out. So you're thinking with scarcity. Stop thinking like I need to get my career first and then search for a husband because what it is, there's perks in success. When you are successful, there's a lot of perks, a lot of rewards in being successful that make you forget that you need to look for a man because you're enjoying that independent, that independent life. You're enjoying that new car, that new crib, all these things that you have accomplished. Things that build your pride up, your ego up. So you think you don't need nobody. But eventually, that true nature that God put in you to want to be with a woman, to be with a man, excuse me, to want to serve a man, to want to have a husband, it's too late because you, you're set in your ways. You're so unpleasant, too hard to deal with. So when you start to put yourself on the dating market, men find it very hard to be with you. They'll sleep with you, but they don't want to see no future with you because of where you're acting, where your personality is now. You need to go... Look for a man when you are still moldable, when a man can design and customize you for his desires and his wants while you are still pursuing a career. So y'all got it back. That's why it's difficult for you to find a man because you have already molded yourself with independence and feminism. You're not feminine. Feminine. You're not that at all. And keep playing it. I don't have kids. I still don't have a family. I was focused on trying to get after the bag and all this yo what i'm in a place now in my life where i'm reevaluating everything my values my perspectives what i really want in the future and what i really want is a family is a family i feel like social media or just everything around us society in general wants to exactly <laughs> excuse me like i said before things have changed times have changed she says she feels like social media and everything around them see there's different pressures now in 2024 or even in the new millennium uh, from 2000 to now that existed that didn't exist before because i come from a time where there wasn't no internet there was no social media there was no facebook that i know yes some of y'all don't believe that you know what I'm saying? but yes i am that old um, there's no, there was no Snapchat, no Instagram, no YouTube, none of that stuff, right? We come from a time where the pressures to be something was not as great as it, as it is now. That's why women now are more pressured to look their best, to get BBLs, to get their lips injected like that. They are, un, they are underneath more pressure and stress, which I don't really give a damn, but they are underneath so many more stresses and pressures now to perform and act and behave a certain way. And that narrative and that negative propaganda of you don't need a man is easier now. It's easier to spread that out to people because of social media, because of the, the uh, media outlets that we have now, more than anything now. And this time now, accessibility to everything that is wrong is easier now than ever been before. So they go for this hook, line, and sinker, and then they sink. And when they sink in that bullshit, then they realize they made a mistake. That's what you're hearing from these women right now. To push that women... The woman is the future. No, the family is the future. There are so many women. Ah, uh, here we go. That BS. She's gonna try to combat that, but you get what I'm saying. So anyway, you let me know what you think about this. Um, again, good morning to everybody. I'll be talking to you soon. Oh yeah, live stream Thursday.
515 Central Standard Time. Live stream Thursday, 515 Central Standard Time.